Hello my friend, welcome to my campsite. I don't typically camp too much at campgrounds because I don't like to be packed in like a sardine. I prefer more remote camping, but I had a lot of work to catch up on and laundry to do, so I figured I'd stay here for a few days. Plus, this is really the only campground I can stay at and still be really close to the lake. What type of campground do you like to stay at the most? You have to let me know down below in the comments. I like to stay at campgrounds that are closest to bodies of water. Rivers, oceans, lakes, doesn't matter, as long as there's water, I'm a happy girl. Speaking of that, I'm going to try to go paddle boarding for a little bit while it's still sunny and enjoy the sunshine and get some vitamin D. And on that note, let's go. Time to go paddle boarding. Are you ready? Cause I am. <laughs> I found a nice secluded spot on the beach, which is pretty unheard of since this is such a beautiful, picturesque spot. But this is why this is my favorite time of year in Tahoe before all the crowds arrive for summertime. There's not boom boxes lining the beach, lots of people. Come July, this beach will be packed full. And it's kind of hard to enjoy the beauty when there's so many people. So right now I'm gonna take advantage of it, set up my paddle board, paddle around a little bit, enjoy the sun. It's beautiful out. This thing is super portable and so convenient to pull down and carry on your back down to the lake, but <sighs> takes quite a while to pump up. Oh, and it gets harder as you go. I just paddled out to this little island. It's all mine. It's beautiful. There's no one else around. I'm hoping you can see this crystal clear blue water. Let me switch it so you can see. Hi! Look how beautiful it is. Extremely clear. Lake Tahoe is apparently the second deepest lake in the United States. I think it's around 1600 feet deep. I can't imagine how cold it is of the depth, but I think the deepest lake is in Oregon. However, I think Lake Tahoe might take the cake for the prettiest lake. Just enjoying some sunset paddle boarding. There's not really anybody out here water skiing or wake surfing because well, First of all would be because it's really freaking cold. The water's really cold still. So it's not something you want to be wake surfing or skiing in unless you have a wetsuit on. But it's certainly perfect for some paddle boarding. Ah, those are my feet. Check out these rocks. I don't want my paddle falling in. That would be really bad. But if you can see all these rocks. Look how cool they are. It's so pretty. I'm on my way. Yes, I'm on my way. It's the perfect day. Yes, I'm on my way. Oh. All this paddle boarding and sunshine will make you hungry, so I think it's time to head back to my campsite and start making dinner. What do you think we're making tonight? Find out. I'm about to make some spaghetti for dinner, and you know what my favorite thing to have with spaghetti is? 
No, it's not bread. It's a nice glass of wine. And thanks to today's sponsor, Bright Cellars. I have six different wines from around the world to choose from. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine subscription that uses a seven question quiz that matches you to wine source from all over the world and delivers it right to your door. The seven questions are simple and fun, so it's a non-wine snobby way of selecting and discovering wine that you'll love. You can rate and provide feedback on the wines each month, helping them fine tune the selections for you. And any bottle that you don't love, they'll replace in your next box. I enjoy a good glass of wine, but to be honest, I really don't know much about it. I always stick to the same kind and never really venture out of my comfort zone because there's always so many to choose from. Bright Cellars chooses wine just for me, and while I enjoy my glass of wine, I also get to learn more about the wine with their wine education cards. Each wine comes with an educational card that outlines tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperatures, and origin. It's fun to read about the wine when you're drinking it, and it also is awesome to impress others on your wine knowledge. <laughs> Based on my quiz, I was matched with mostly white wines, which is what I prefer, with an occasional good smooth red. I think tonight I'm going to have the 2019 Sauvignon Blanc from France, which will pair perfectly with my spaghetti. Bright Sellers is giving my followers 50% off their first six bottle box. Follow the link to take the quiz and get started. Now let's get on with this spaghetti. Hmm delicious. Tastes like a perfectly crisp Sauvignon Blanc. And it tastes just like lemon, lime, and green apple. It's great. Here's another pro tip while I'm at it. If you're ever going camping and you want to bring wine glasses, use plastic ones. They're shatterproof and it'll save you lots of headaches. Don't ask me why I know. Just prepping some vegetables. Yes, I use vegetables in my spaghetti. Sometimes I include squash too, but I just use zucchini and onion this time. I cut the vegetables up very small and evenly sized, and I'll tell you why soon. Check out these legs. You see them falling down the glass? I believe that has relation to the amount of alcohol content. Don't quote me on that, I told you. I'm not a wine connoisseur. That's why I'm cheating and letting someone help me out with my wine suggestions. Then I add the ground beef. Sometimes I use ground turkey, but prefer ground beef for spaghetti. I try to use grass-fed and always choose lean. Then the veggies go in and finish cooking. The veggies need to get soft, but not too soft. I don't like them soggy. Instead of just using sauce, beef, and noodles, I add zucchini and onion, but I chop the onion and zucchini very small and evenly sized, so it almost gives you the feeling like you're eating more meat. Basically, I'm tricking you into eating more vegetables instead of meat. It, it all sautés together and it feels really meaty, but there's less meat and more vegetables, but you still get the same great taste. My mom used to do this as a kid because I never wanted to eat vegetables. So she was like, how am I going to trick my daughter into eating healthier? This was one of the things she did and I've continued to do it ever since. It's great. If you have kids that are really picky eaters and they don't like vegetables, try this. I bet you they won't even realize that the tiny little bits covered in sauce are vegetables. No, I don't make my own sauce. I wish I had a long passed down family recipe, but I don't. <laughs> I do like to add lots of extra dried herbs though. Basil, oregano, thyme, and lots of garlic. It's finally done. I'm so hungry and I can't wait to eat. So I'm gonna sit down, enjoy my glass of wine, eat my spaghetti, and then tomorrow morning I hope to get up pretty early and try to get some fishing in. So I'll see you then. Good morning, my friend. Welcome to the lake. I'm trying to do a little early afternoon fishing. I just left the campsite. I haven't actually fished at Lake Tahoe before. This is only my, I think, fifth time fishing. So I'm still learning. I typically, just use a pretty classic setup with a bobber and a worm. 
but I'm trying to kick it up a notch and I'm gonna try the Carolina rig which I've read is great in this lake and that is my number six hook with about two feet of line a barrel swivel you're supposed to use a glass bead but I didn't have one so I'm just using a gold bead from one of my other lures and then my weight and I just need my worms which I double check with the ranger and we're all good on using worms in the lake and then hook line and sinker right that's how it goes <laughs> Okay, we'll see how this goes. Crossing my fingers that I can catch a fish. <laughs> my little gold bead. Another Palomar knot. Oh, hi, bird. This guy has been scouting out my worms all morning. He's a ballsy bird. <laughs> I have a bad feeling that the only thing I'm going to be catching today is a bird. This is my third Palomar knot today. And I think I'm going to have it down pat. Still learning how to tie fishing knots. That bird's laughing at me. That tends to happen a lot. Birds nearby. Hey, look at that girl. They're all coming in. Coming in hot. Ready for the worms. Okay. If I'm doing anything wrong, let me know because I'm fairly sure I am. But you gotta help a girl catch fish. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. There are lots of myths and stories that surround Lake Tahoe, some darker than others. At 1,600 feet deep, it's incredibly cold and also difficult to scuba dive in without the right equipment. may not catch any fish, but it's certainly beautiful. I always focus on the beauty of it instead of the stories of what might be lurking beneath. Growing up in the south, lakes were always cloudy, smelly, and slimy on the bottom. Really, we're lucky to have such a beautiful, serene place to spend time with and enjoy. Even when I'm not successfully catching a fish. Look how clear it is. And I don't see one fish. Not one. Perfect. Let's see if they're hungry. Well, I've been here about two hours and I haven't caught anything. The ranger said I need a worm blower. He's like, do you have a worm blower? And I was like, nope, what's that? He's like, well, it inflates the worms so they flip. Maybe that's why I haven't caught anything. Maybe I'm just not meant to be a fisher. Not giving up yet. What's the secret? What do you need to catch a fish in Lake Tahoe? In this crystal clear, pristine blue water. Help a girl catch a fish! Got two fishing rods in the water, both with live worms. Not one has gotten a bite yet. Do you know how hard it is to manage two fishing rods when you don't really know what you're doing? Maybe there's a reason why I don't see any fish. I saw like one or two other people fishing, but I don't think they caught anything either. Maybe it's my worm blower that I'm missing. Maybe I need to charter a boat and go out to the very middle and try casting my line there. It's such a beautiful day though, even if I don't catch any fish. What better place to cast a line? It's not looking good for me. It's not looking like a fish dinner night. It's looking like a leftover spaghetti and wine night. Better luck next time though.